everybody, Donnie Gardner here with the Boston Terror Society podcast. In today's interview, I talk with Tara Ebston. She is the vice president of the Southern Cross Boston Terrier Rescue. It's located in Jackson, Tennessee, and it actually helps rescue other states as well in the area. But she's going to walk us through how to adopt a Boston Terrier from her rescue, as well as how you can become a foster parent to Boston Terriers. So without further ado, let's get into the interview. Hey, Tara. Thanks so much for coming on today's podcast episode. Um, if you could just tell me a little bit about yourself, your role in the Southern Cross Boston Terrier Rescue, as well as what the Southern Boston Terrier Rescue is all about. Hi, Donnie. First of all, just thank you for having me, giving me the opportunity to talk about rescue. I am the vice president of the rescue. I've been in that role for about six months now, so relatively new role for me, but Before that, I was a transporter. I did some fostering, home visits, things like that. So I've been involved in quite a few different areas of the rescue. As far as our rescue goes with our mission, we are just trying to move a Boston from one situation to a better situation. Find them a safe and happy home, and in the meantime, provide them foster care. Whether our our Bostons come from a variety of different places, whether it be from a breeder or maybe they came in as a stray, maybe they're from a shelter, perhaps they're an owner surrender or someone from a family could not take care of them any longer. Maybe they're from an abuseful or neglectful situation or even sometimes on Craigslist if we feel like a dog is being given away for free or they're posted in a situation that may look like potentially harmful for them, then we will go in and try to pull that dog as well. So that's a little bit about what we try to do and where most of our, our dogs come from. As far as where they're coming from, what would you say that percentage is? As far as percentages, it's really hard to say. And honestly, I would say that that changes according to the year as well. I okay. mean, a lot of people get puppies, you know, for Christmas, things like that, for their kids or for themselves as families. And as we know, puppies are a lot of work in that February March kind of range, we start getting a lot more younger dogs, it seems like, because they realize, hey, this is a lot more work than we thought it would be, or we just don't have the time, you know, to devote to this dog. So we take in a lot more younger dogs, it seems, that time of the year. But as far as the percentages, I can't really say for sure. It kind of comes and goes, but wide variety of reasons that that we bring in dogs. As far as the number of Boston Terriers that you have at any given time. Do you know the overall numbers, like year to year, how many Boston Terriers you rescue? We were originally founded in 2005, actually by a lady named Wendy. She's still involved in our rescue today, and she's actually serving on our board of directors currently. I can tell you that in 2019, we rescued 82 dogs. How many states do you cover? Is it just exclusively Tennessee, or do you kind of cover a certain radius? Not necessarily a certain radius. So we base that on if we have volunteers or fosters in that particular area. Because if we adopt a dog out to a certain state, if for some reason it doesn't work out or that person needs help in the future, we want to have people on standby in that area or at least able to travel to help out if needed. So we do adopt and foster in certain states. And those states are Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia. Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, Ohio, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia. And those states are always um, evolving because we have people who move to different areas and they still want to help out. There's always potential for adding states that we don't currently adopt to. People are always asking about that. Do you adopt to this state? And the the answer, if we don't, is that's always a possibility in the future. So we just try to educate people that we are here and are constantly trying to expand, find new volunteers, new ways to be helpful in in new areas. What is the process of becoming a foster parent? Fostering is my favorite thing to talk about. It's how I first got involved with rescue. And obviously, as you know, we can't do what we do without our foster parents. So we love them. When it comes to fostering, The first thing I always say to people who are asking about fostering or thinking about it is that 
please know that we're here to help you. You know, we have our Facebook group. We have an email you can contact. We give out our personal phone number so that we're available. As far as going about the responsibilities of what do I do as a foster parent, it's your responsibility to provide a home, a bed of some sort, food, and, of course, love for that dog. And I always say you provide those things and we provide the rest. The response of other responsibilities for our foster parents would be taking the dog to vet visits, of course, which we always pay for, giving them any kind of medications that they may need, socializing them to new environments, trying to expose them to things that they may find in their new adoptive homes, such as other dogs, cats, mm-hmm. children maybe, different people, social settings. Now, all those may not work out for a dog, but as a foster parent, it's your responsibility to kind of try to expose them to those things just to find out what they're best suited for. So just in general, getting them ready for their new home. As a foster parent, you, on average, you may be keeping that dog for four to six weeks. That's our average foster time for our particular rescue. With that being said, you may end up keeping that dog for a few months. Or we have fosters that are interested in a forever foster home. They keep that dog for the rest of its life. Those are for dogs to have medical issues or maybe terminally ill, things that may make them undesirable for people to adopt. We give the foster parent information, sort of a step-by-step process for fostering. Hey, these are the things that you need to do as far as being in contact with us. And then, of course, like I said, we're always available for any kind of questions or things that they may run into. Now, as far as applying to adopt to be a foster parent, what that process involves is going to our website, which is southerncrossbtr.com, and you would fill out an application. It's relatively the same application as our adoption application, a little bit different. I think we'll talk more in depth about the application process as far as adoption a little later. So it is very similar to our adoption application. We fill out the application. And with that, we're doing that to find out what your limits and your comfort level are as far as being a foster. You know, for someone like me who had never done it before, I was reserved, had a lot of questions, Uh you know, was kind of unsure. So there's certain types of dogs, you know, we don't want to overwhelm you. So that application process is just to find out what you may be comfortable with, what would be the best dog for us to start you out with. After the application comes getting vet references. So if you currently have a dog, we would check your current vet references. Make sure those check out okay. If you don't currently have a dog, then we would ask for family, friends, colleagues, someone who could attest to to that for you if you don't have a vet. And then okay. after the vet references comes a home visit by one of our volunteers. And that's just to make sure that your your home is safe for a dog to come into. And if all that checks out, then you should be approved. And at that point, you just basically wait for a rescue to come into the area that you live to that we can place that dog with you. Or if that doesn't happen, sometimes, actually a lot of the times, we do end up transporting the dog to you or meeting you so that you're able to to pick up that foster. That's more in depth than I anticipated. You know, yeah, as far as um, going through the references and the in home visit, that's great. Right. It it seems a little daunting at first, you know, especially from uh, the viewpoint of a new person trying to come into foster. But the process on your end is really simple. You're just filling out the application and we're taking care of the rest. But of course we just want to make sure that we're placing our fosters who may be vulnerable in um, the best environment possible for them. But I think the most important part of that is not necessarily, you know, are you a perfect foster parent, but more so that we let you know we're we're available if you need to reach out or you have questions or you're unsure. You know, we want you to ask about things. We want to help you grow and, and be the best foster parent that you can be. So I think that's the most important part is just letting letting them know that we're here when they need us. Right. Is there a particular, like, do you have an ideal candidate for a foster family? We are, you know, almost open to anyone because, you know, we have all types of different adoptive parents. 
We have senior citizens that want to adopt a dog, you know, that may not have young children in the home. We have younger people who do have young children in the home. We have single moms that want to adopt a dog. Also, just people who aren't married and maybe living alone. So we have a wide variety of adopters. So, of course, we want a variety of foster homes as well. So there's no ideal foster parent that we're looking for. We just want somebody to, that's able to provide those things that I talked about before. Most of our fosters are just normal people like you and I that love Boston Terriers and just want to help out. As far as adopting a Boston Terrier from your rescue, um, can you just walk me through the process? of what that would be like? So right now, we currently have six adoptable dogs. That changes, obviously, from week to week, sometimes even day to day. Um, currently, we have three pending adoptions, so people that are set up for their adoptive date, we're just waiting on that to happen. And then we currently have 15 dogs that are what we call on hold. So those dogs are dogs that we have maybe just brought into rescue, that they're we're giving them some time in their foster home to acclimate, find out their personality, you know, find out what kind of home they would work best in. Some of those dogs will be coming up for adoption soon. Some of those dogs include our forever fosters that I talked about earlier. So that's just a little bit about the dogs that we currently have in our rescue. As far as being able to find the Boston Terriers, you said you have six that are adoptable right now. Where would somebody go to see these Boston Terriers? Yes. So the best place to find them would be on our website, southerncrossbtr.com. We also have a few other places that you may find those dogs. One would be Pet Finder. A lot of people across the U.S. use that to look for adoptable dogs. So we're on there as well. And also our public Facebook page, Southern Cross Boston Terrier Rescue, on there. We will make posts about available dogs and from Facebook and Pet Finder. From there, you would be actually directed to our website. That's where you're going to find the list of adoptable dogs and their bios on there. In the bio, you're going to see pictures, descriptions about the dog, how old they are, basically everything that you would want to know about that dog. As far as the application and everything, what does the application look like? When you complete an application, there's a screening process. The process itself usually takes about a few weeks, maybe a little longer, depending on how many applications we have at that time. Fill out the application, of course, would be the first step. And you may be asking, well, what kind of questions am I going to be seeing on this application? I will say it is rather lengthy, but that is just so we can provide the best home possible for a Boston and also find a great fit for you or your family. One of the things that it asks on there is what Boston are you applying for? So you put the name there. Or if you don't have one in particular that you want or you don't know yet, you can just leave that blank and we'll still process your application and find a good fit for your home. Other things that we may ask on the application are who's living in your home, how many adults are there, how many children, if any, are there, and do the adults in the home consent to the adoption? Because we want, obviously, everyone on board in that home for adopting a dog. We ask if you have a fenced-in yard. Now, a fenced-in yard is not a requirement to adopt from us, but if you do have a fence, we need to know if it's secure. And if it's not secure, you know, do you plan on just leashing the dog? We want to know that you're just not going to leave that dog unattended in, you know, a backyard that's not necessarily secure. Right. Same thing with a pool or a lake nearby or maybe in your backyard. Again, it's not that you can't have a pool or a lake. We just want to know that is it secure or are you going to take the steps needed to protect your dog from being harmed? Other things we're going to ask are the amount of time the dog's going to be left alone during the day and for how many days a week. That's just good to know because some dogs have separation anxiety at first or things like that. So we want to be able to accommodate the dog's needs, but also your schedule. We want to know where that dog may be staying during the day while you're at work. Where you plan on the dog to sleep at night. The most important question, perhaps, why do you want a Boston? We also want to know, are you financially able to care, to, to care for that Boston? Not necessarily how much money do you make or anything like that, but are you financially prepared to, you know, pay for a vet bill every year for their yearly checkups, things like that? And we ask about how you might handle certain behavior problems if you came into contact with them. And again, there's no right or wrong answer on that. 
it's just putting it out there so you can think about those things and maybe realize like, hey, these are some of the things I may end up dealing with, you know, with when adopting. We ask about current animals that you have in the home or have had in the past because that's what we're going to use for the next step of the process, which is the vet reference. So with that, we're just making sure that current dogs that you have are up to date on shots and heartworm prevention, making sure that they've been spayed or neutered. And if all of that checks out, your vet reference looks good, the next step is the home visit, and that is done by a volunteer. Usually we have a volunteer that comes to your home for the home visit, and that's a time that we set up that's convenient for you and your schedule. In certain situations, if we don't have a volunteer in the area or it's just not able to work out with schedules, we can do a video home visit. And we kind of make unique exceptions for those. We like to have a volunteer there. But a good example of that is right now with everything going on with COVID, we're obviously not sending out volunteers uh, into people's homes with social (laughs) distancing. Um, So a good example of that is right now where we are doing only video home visits, and hopefully that will subside soon, but that is always an option if needed. And again, in that home visit, we're just making sure your home is safe for a dog. Our volunteer is going to observe the other pets in your home, you know, make sure that they're cared for. That's also a good time for that potential adopter to ask any questions to the volunteer that they may have since you have someone in front of you that um, is experienced with the rescue. So at that point, you've got your application, your vet reference is checked out. If the home, the home visit is approved, and that's through a process where the volunteer goes home and fills out a form and sends us, and we look that over. If the home visit is approved, the next step is the rescue itself, taking a look at everything collectively all together, and if they feel like it's a good fit, at that point, we'll send the application over to the foster home for the foster parent of the particular dog um, being applied for. The foster parent will look that application over. At that point, we put the applicant in touch with the foster parent. They get together, talk, and give the potential adopter to ask any more particular questions about the dog. Also, if the foster parent has any other questions. Something that may be a little unique about our rescue is at the point that the application is sent over the foster parent, it is technically approved, but we always give the foster parent the final say-so on the adoption because that foster parent knows this dog better than anyone else in the rescue. They've spent the most time with this dog. And so we just give that power to the foster parent to make sure that, yes, I think this is a good idea. You know, we should go through with this. I think this will be a good match. And if the foster feels like it's a good fit, we go ahead and set up the adoption day at that point. Is there any type of support that the rescue provides after that? Absolutely. On the adoption day, there is a fee that you're going to be paying before you pick up the dog. That fee is anywhere from $150 to $400, and that is based on the age of the dog. So once the adoption takes place, you pay your fee, everything is settled. We don't just leave you. Again, like Mm -hmm. I said earlier, we have that private Facebook group, which I feel is our most important asset. People can ask questions on there. And, you know, there are people on that group that have, you know, way more experience than I do in things. You know, even I ask questions sometimes. And it's just a really good resource for um getting questions answered or problems are always available by email or phone. We are there to support you after your adoption with with any needs that you may have. You want to adopt a a Boston, but you don't see one that you're interested in at that time, I always tell people, just go ahead and file an application. We'll process it. Go ahead and get it approved, so to speak. And then um, we'll keep that on file so that when we get a Boston in, that we think may be a good fit, we can take a look, get in contact with you and say, hey, we have this dog, tell them about that dog, you know, are you interested? And at that point, we'll critique the application a little more just to make sure that it is a good fit. So I would say, yes, it's definitely a good idea to go ahead and fill out an application, especially if you're looking for, you know, 
a younger dog. Those are sometimes harder to come by depending on certain factors. So that's always a good idea to go ahead and file an application. As far as words of advice for somebody that maybe wants to foster a Boston Terrier or adopt a Boston Terrier, what would be your word of advice? I would just say if you're looking to adopt or foster, if you're looking to get involved in rescue in any way possible, I would say that you won't regret it. Just go ahead and do it because it, it is one, really one of the most rewarding experiences, whether it be fostering or adopting. As far as people getting into contact with your rescue, what would be the best way for them to do that? The best way to find out information about our rescue is through the website, like I said, southerncrossbtr.com. The best way to know what's going on with our rescue on a continuous basis is by following our, our Facebook page, Southern Cross Boston Terrier Rescue. Like I said, that's where we list dogs for adoption. That's where we post about any fundraisers that we may be having, and it's also where we post adoption pictures of new adopters and their dogs. We do a lot of fundraisers throughout the year. Uh, Sometimes online auctions are one of our big ones. Also, we do something called the Boston Tea Party every year in Nashville. It takes place in October. It's just a good time to bring your dog, get pictures made. We have a treat walk. We do a live auction there, a Boston kissing booth. Just really a lot of fun, a way to meet people and also obviously raise money for our Bostons in need. So Facebook page and also our website are probably the best ways to to find out what's going on with our rescue. Okay. Well, awesome. I'm going to have to look into that whole uh, Boston tea party. That sounds interesting. Yes, please do. (laughs) Um, All right. Well, Tara, thank you so much for being on the podcast and everything. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. If you want to be able to contact Tara, just check out the show notes below. All of her contact information will be down there. Also, if you go to the article that's posted on the Boston Terrier Society.com website, you'll have all that contact information there as well, including the states that she actually helps rescue Boston Terriers from. Thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.